Let's take a few minutes and talk about the repair situations that you're going to get into if you're a technician out in the field repairing irrigation systems. Now that's what I do all day every day. Uh, my business is 99% focused just on maintenance and repair and I may install less than maybe a half dozen systems per year and I only do that for favors of existing clients and landscapers and so forth. So mostly what I see is repairs and I'm here to pass along a little bit of that experience so when you get out here and see some of these crazy situations, what are the things that you're going to see the most and what are the things that you're going to have the most problems with? Now, let's talk a little bit about probably one of the trickiest deals that uh, an installing contractor can cause and a repair contractor has to deal with. It's the issue of putting fittings too close together. Now, I'm going to show you here basically uh, the layout of a just a basic valve in a manifold situation. And as you can see here, the fittings are very close together. And I see this situation almost every day. It happens so much. So, so what's the problem here? Um, it, everything is glued in and so forth. So what happens when we get a leak here and we have to cut this fitting out or replace this valve? Valve. As we can see here, this is a, a standard size coupling. There's not room for you to cut this pipe and make a, another repair on here. You've got to remember that the glue is probably going to have about a quarter inch of a lip here. So you could possibly cut this off and squeeze a, a coupling up on there, but you're only going to get this piece of pipe maybe two thirds or three quarters of the way into the socket, and that's asking for trouble. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways here in a minute that we can deal with this and how you're going to have to cut this out and maybe go up and over or bump out around the situation. Now, the bump out or the elbow up, people call it a number of different things, is useful in some different situations. Now, we don't want to do it too much because we don't want to put unnecessary elbows into a situation of the approximate pressure loss for a one inch PVC elbow is around three PSI. Now obviously that's going to vary depending on your flow rate, your pressure and so forth. So we don't really want to do anything to the piping that's going to take away pressure downstream. But you're going to get into situations where it has to be done. Two of the most complex situations or the toughest to uh, correct is when you have a long sweeping bend in a pipe. Now if you install systems you know that class 200 has a bit of bend to it especially on a 20 foot stick of pipe and the way that these trenchers work it's nearly impossible to get a straight line in a trench. That trench is always going to bend a little bit because normally one set of wheels or one of the tracks of the trencher is the drive and it always kind of twists you one way or another. Maybe not all trenchers are like that but the ones that I use do so none of the trenches I cut are ever 100% straight. So at some point, you're going to have some bend and some curve in the pipe. So if you actually have a fitting or something in that curve and you get a leak, well, you've got a problem because if you try to go in with a an expansion repair coupling or just a regular coupling and you have to cut this in a bend and force it back together, it's almost going to guarantee that you don't get a complete seal when that goes back together. So what are our choices? Well, there's really only one thing to do and that's to use a bump out to take the pressure off of that curve. Now we've got two different situations. We've got a pipe that's bowed vertically or a pipe that's bowed horizontally. Let's take a look at this illustration here. And what this shows is a, a pipe that's bowed vertically in the ground, straight up and down. So what we have to do to relieve the pressure on that bend is we're going to have to do a horizontal bump out. So if we've got a vertical bow, then we go to the side and that straightens it out and takes the pressure off of each end. Now we've added four elbows to the equation, so that's not uh, exactly the, the best, best situation. But here in a bend, there's not a lot else that you can do. Now, if we're talking about a horizontal bend, and that's probably what you're going to see the most is a, a pipe that's going out across the ground and just bends as it goes out, you know, 
over 15 or 20 feet. So, and you may have a, a head location that's there in the bend and you have to repair that. So if we have a horizontal bend, like we see here in this illustration, what we're going to want to do is a, a vertical bump out. We're going to go straight up and over, and that relieves the horizontal pressure, the bend that's on those fittings, and that way we can just go up and over. We can let the pipes relax and be ultimately straight as they want to be, and then we can apply our fittings there and take the pressure off of that and provide a good permanent solution to that. We also have some other options. Um, if the, the pipe in question isn't a pressurized pipe, if it isn't the main line, let's say it's just a zone line that only pressurizes up when that zone is running and it's not under constant pressure, we can use a flexible fitting here. If you can see that here, this one bends. And this has helped me out a number of different times. Um, when you're in the ground, probably the number one enemy of an irrigation system is roots. So as we go in to make repairs or even as we're installing a system, there may be a root of a tree that we just don't want to cut through. Now I cut through a lot of roots in installing a system, but sometimes you have a main root that you just don't want to compromise. And the truth is the more you harm this root system, the more that you're harming a tree or, or whatever else that we're talking about. So there's been times to where in cutting a trench and digging out, I, I've had to go up and over a root or something like that just to, or a rock will be another good situation, but just to get by it and keep the pipes as deep as we need, sometimes you need a flexible fitting for this, and it's great that it'll even out over a distance here, and you can even make a curve around a piece or something like that in a horizontal or vertical fashion. Um, and what this is, is flexible PVC. I've neglected to mention this in, in other lessons because the flexible PVC is hard to find. This is a pre-constructed fitting that I bought at Lowe's, which is a, a home improvement warehouse, big box store that we have locally. And, and probably most of the people in the U.S. have the Lowe's or something similar near them. And that's where I got this. Like I said, it's pre-constructed, about seven bucks but I promise you it's worth every penny of that. And I always keep one of these on my truck just for those situations to where you don't want to be going elbow to elbow and doing some tricky bends or whatever. You can just pop this daddy in and it's really going to do a great job for you and save you some time. Then probably one of the most frustrating situations that you can get into in a repair is a, just a common leak on a pipe. I can't tell you the number of times, it's uncountable, the number of times that I've walked up to a situation. You know there's probably a pipe right there in the vicinity and you see a little water bu uh, puddle happening there. Maybe you might even see the water bubbling up in the puddle. And it's, you know, just common sense to think, well, the leak is probably right under that puddle. No problem. I'll dig it up and fix it. Done and done. Well, things ain't always how they seem especially with PVC pipes, and even times when there isn't any slope to the yard or to the ground that the pipes are in, the pipe itself may be sloped just because of the way it was installed. And the problem is, is that with hard ground, especially clay, when you cut a trench in it and you put the pipes in and you pack that dirt back in the trench, that dirt is never going to be as compact as the dirt around it. So if there's any tilt at all to these pipes, if there's a little small leak happening somewhere, the water may wick down the underside of the pipe downhill. There have been situations to where I've seen a puddle, tell the homeowner, hey, no problem, I'll have that fixed for you in an hour. Uh, and then six, seven hours later, I'm still looking for the leak. Now, we hope that this don't happen every time, but it's not uncommon, and it's happened to me several times to where, you know, and the prices in my market and the way I price things, you know, a small leak on a single piece of PVC may be a $75 problem, but we've had situations to where it was a $750 problem. So you kind of have to be aware that this may happen and you may get tricked by this. So what you're going to do if you dig the area up and you see that the leak isn't happening there, but it appears to be further up the pipe, what you need to do is go about two or three feet up 
in what you perceive to be the higher elevation of the pipe and dig a test hole. Don't just dig it down to the top of the pipe because you may not even see any water. It may be bone dry until you get down actually underneath the pipe and reach your fingers around and feel to see if there's any water that's traveling, traveling along the bottom of this pipe. Now, uh, it, it may take several test holes for you to find where there's a spot to where no water is traveling. So then you just dig up between there and your last test hole and somewhere in between there will be your leak. Um, but don't always count on things to be as they appear. Unfortunately, in this business, because 99% of everything that we deal with is underground, you're going to get tricked into some situations. And that's the purpose for this lesson, just to give you a heads up on some things that you might be aware of. And I'm sure every market has its own little idiosyncrasies that you have to watch out for. But here are the big ones, and here are the things that, in my experience, has caused me the most problems.